Hello and welcome to KalishTimes.com. My name is Rube and this is where we have lined up 10 episodes for you on financial planning. And in today's episode, we're going to be discussing, guess what? Financial planning, yeah, in a, in, in, in a broad perspective. And uh, I have with me Mr. Emmett Forth. He's the regional head of business development at ATFX. But before uh, Emmett, I start, you know, talking to you, I just quickly want to uh, share or, or have a or give a gentle reminder to our audiences who are watching us that this podcast series is powered by IG. It's an exceptional platform where you can trade in over 16,000 financial products or financial markets. Okay, so let's quickly get on with our discussion on financial planning. Emmet, let's start with the basic. What is What does financial planning mean to you? Uh, financial planning means to me, uh, it's it's a matter of managing your, uh, your income, okay? Yeah. Um, to me, it's a mindset. Yeah. Okay, it, it takes discipline, it takes uh, commitment. Some, uh, to me, it's, it's if you have an income of 10,000 dirhams or 15,000 dirhams, as long as you have the right mindset, you'll be able to divide that income into savings, into investing, uh, investing in, 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 in products that actually suit you, okay. and at the same time covering your expenses. Okay. So the, the, the idea in the end, you need to have some sort of passive income besides your, 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 your salary. Your your income that your the income that is actually bringing, and the idea behind that is to always find other sources of income to to support you just in case of any anything that happens that is out of your control. Yeah. Okay. So in case of any emergency, you should always have like a resource where you can have uh, you know resource of passive income. And of course, you know we all uh, it's a given. I mean, it doesn't take any rocket science to understand or to know that we all want to make you know more money because there's only a set amount that you can that you can earn in in, in a job. You know, for example. Um, or, or if you're salaried, but then we we all want to have resources where we can generate more income, right? But it's very interesting that you spoke about having a certain mindset. You know, so an, an investor when starting out or when starting to invest should have a, have a certain mindset. I want to know that what are the kind of qualities, uh, or what what are the kind of things that one should keep in mind before uh, one start investing? And I want to know both the sides of it, like you know the financial side of it. What is the amount of what is the amount of money? That you should be looking at when you start investing, how safe you should be playing in terms of uh, uh, the, the money side, the financial part of it, and then of course you know the psychology that comes into play. The psychology. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, let me just put it uh, on the table. So, in my opinion, the first thing you need to do is invest in yourself. Right? Yeah. So, uh, before before getting into any sort of investment, you need to do your research. Okay. How do you do your research? The first thing you need to do is to go to a few seminars. Uh, a few conferences mm -hmm. to 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 actually learn from the best okay to learn from people who actually experience yeah. uh, you know uh, what what investment is the first bad investment that they did and how they actually reached to the top Wonderful. yes yeah. you could also find a lot of these investors uh, on in the library on box yeah. okay you could read about what they did you could read about how they managed to basically be able to to grow their portfolio after you do your research and get the homework, mm -hmm. you need to ask yourself, what, what's the next thing? What you want to invest in, okay? Mm -hmm. Say, for me, uh, um, a minimal investment of $10,000 mm -hmm. is good enough for you to start, okay? okay. $10,000, anyone can actually be able to get it. Mm -hmm. okay? From that $10,000, you can then start growing uh, initially, okay? okay. okay. Um, investing in yourself is the most important because once once you have the right mindset you will make right decisions okay yes. for if if i'm investing in stocks for instance i'll follow the best warren buffett okay if i am uh, into real estate okay in saudi i'll follow also the best the person who's actually investing there okay. who wh what property is he investing in okay. what sort of ideas that he's actually getting okay. okay and this is this is this is the first the first initial Step steps that, that yes yeah. so you're saying that you know reach out to the best rather than especially if you're a new investor then it's best to reach out to somebody who knows the job well rather than you know starting out and then of course on your own then then of course you know on the job you can always learn yeah. you know so can you can you tell me what according to you is is if i may ask you know the best uh, trading strategy or or who would you put your put your money on what is the kind of strategy my 
in my opinion, I th I think long term long term okay. strategy is the best. Okay, especially when it comes to stocks. Okay, the the market is moving on 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 a daily basis. Okay, there is fluctuations in the market. Okay, if I go in and out on a daily basis, most likely. I'm going to actually make a wrong decision, and yeah. this is just just common sense. Okay, uh, when it comes to long term, if uh, the terms uh, the strategy that I like is is someone who's with who's bringing consistent consistent returns. Okay, someone who's who's able to trade on consistently bringing anything between ten to fifteen percent. Mm -hmm. That's 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 a good. That's a good trader for me. And okay. over a period of two years, if he has a track record of two years, this is someone I would actually be able to trust. You put your money on. Yeah, you put your bet on. Perfect. All right. Uh, I want to know from you, Ahmed, what are the classes of assets that you should be investing in? Yeah. Okay. So it really depends on on your risk appetite. Okay. Yeah. I, for instance, like to diversify. I'll, I'll take my yeah. my experience. I like to yeah. diversify. Yeah. Okay. My diversification is into real estate, yeah. mutual funds. Yeah. Okay. Stocks, FX, and CFDs. Now, FX and CFDs are the much riskier assets. Okay. okay? Uh, then comes stocks. Then mutual fund is is less risky, and then real estate obviously is 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 the less riskier than all. Mm -hmm. Now the other thing that I also sometimes do is invest into uh, gold coins. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. okay. So okay. Uh, anytime I have, you know, more 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 money that I don't know where to put in, I just usually just buy gold. Okay. Okay, so this is also something that uh, that that I look into. The more you diversify your portfolio, the better. Because if one asset drops, yeah. there's always another asset that will be able to cover uh, cover loss. that loss. Yeah. Okay, and and this is this is the way that that, that a person should uh, should actually invest into. So you have to to repeat again. You have real estate. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you have mutual funds. Yes. You have then stocks, yeah. FX and CFDs are the most uh, riskier. Yeah. Yes, and then you have also gold coins if you're able to actually. Uh, if you have spare. If you have spare money, money that you can, yeah, okay. you can. Get you can put in gold coins gold as well. Coins. Okay, you know, interesting because a lot of people, uh, you know, take loans, especially when it comes to buying their dream house. You know, you you, you spoke about you know investing in real estate, you know, mortgage or loan, you know, against a property. And I was, I was, I was just thinking about it that you know we were having this discussion about good loan versus bad loan. So we're going to touch both the both the things. I, is there anything which is called a good loan? Yes, there is. Yeah, which there is, is interesting. So I want you to uh, tell us a little okay, bit about so, it. Okay, so so I'll I'll we'll we'll start before talking about loans. I'll tell you what what most mindset of the middle class uh, have. And yeah. this is this is something that I feel that we all have been taught. The, the wrong information okay? okay whether it was in schools yes. or whether it was our family ideally what most of the families they tell you that you know you graduate you do your master's degree you work from nine to five you have a certain income you build a family and then you invest in your in your home okay in your own house and you pay a mortgage now the mortgage is a liability and people need to understand there's a difference between a liability and an asset right if you're paying mortgage over a house this house is not yours Okay. Yeah. Ideally, you think that this is your house, yeah. but you're paying a mortgage over 20 years. Mm -hmm. Okay, you cannot guarantee yeah. within this 20 years that every single year, every single uh, month, you will have income to be able to actually pay out that mortgage. Now, we all know about the the, the issues in the U.S. about the mortgage and what happened. The, exactly. w the yeah. banks, they yeah. the banks want to sell, yeah. so they give mortgages. Yes. You go get two, three, four houses, and in the end, you can pay. Uh, the house then, that you actually yeah this is one of the reasons now yeah. the 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 loan good loan yeah. is is a loan that you could actually invest yeah. in something that will bring you a return okay. now passive income is the best type of investment that you can get into a lot of people are getting into credit cards to to pay uh, to spend on luxury stuff the first thing you think about well when you're here in Dubai, for instance, you want to buy a very nice house, a very nice car, and you're paying a lot of luxury uh, payments that are not necessary, right? Yeah. The loan, a good loan, is to take the loan and invest it in a place okay. where it actually brings you income, um, passive uh, passive income to you. Yeah. If you re if you if you look into the the most richest people in in the world, they're 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 driving the cheapest cars, 
okay? Because they feel that <laughs> cars are actually... Exactly, because the value is going to depreciate, <laughs> exactly. depreciate, depreciate over a period of time. Exactly. exactly. So mm -hmm. why, why spend uh, so 70 money, or yeah. $80,000 or something like that for, for mm -hmm. Bentley and all of that, if, if so you could... Put your temptations uh, behind your back pocket and exactly. listen to this, all right. <laughs> so temptation and, yeah. and spending money on luxury is is not the way to go. Okay. I, I've, I've, I, I've seen a lot of people, even even they come into the way and when they do, they buy a yacht, okay, the first thing. Wow. Yacht to me is, is, is a luxury, okay? Absolutely, yes. So getting a loan to buy uh, a car or to buy uh, a yacht or or to invest in 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 a house that is very very expensive yeah. is not the way to go. Okay. Uh, I will take a loan and put it in a place where I could afford that this asset is becomes mine. I yeah. basically changed the the deed. Yeah. The name deed is mine. Yeah. Okay, and then I could pay the loan in many five six seven years. That's okay. okay. But I I will take the loan and put it in somewhere. Yeah. That, that this property becomes mine, is okay. mine now. Okay? okay. So, for instance, if so, one, I'm sorry to intervene, but you're saying, Emma, that you would actually put your money somewhere where you know that, or you're going to take a loan for something where you know that the property, for example, the property, it immediately became becomes yours. So you don't have to pay for it for the next, say, 20 years, where you know that the property still belongs to the bank yes. and not to you. Yes. Okay. That 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 I will do. Okay. So so for instance, okay. So what? Why would I? I'll give you an example. Here in the UAE, right? Yeah. Why would I buy in Dubai if I could afford to buy in Ajman, for instance? Okay. So okay. Dubai here is for two million, all yeah. right? And I need to let's say uh, put into into Dubai two million. Okay. I could buy in Ajman, okay, yeah. for for three hundred three hundred and fifty thousand, right? Yeah. And I could easily take a loan for three hundred and fifty if my salary is even fifteen thousand. Yeah. Okay. And then I just put it in that property. That property becomes mine. Okay. Then I rent it. The money that comes from that rent, I could pay for mm -hmm. okay. the loan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Once the loan is done, yeah. and then my income increases, yeah. I then start thinking of investing in Dubai. Okay. okay. Because because the first year, yeah. you could be getting paid ten to fifteen thousand, yeah. but on the fifth year, yeah. you're probably getting paid twenty five yeah. to thirty. Of course. Okay. You start. You grow. Okay. You grow. Yeah. So you're yeah. growing your career. Yeah. At that stage, I could start then investing okay. in Dubai. So it's all about. Uh, what your income is and what your, not your preference, but what's the best investment okay. for you, okay? okay. So, okay. Would, you, would you put like a, a certain percentage to it? Like you would say, for example, you know, if I make an X amount of money or I'm paid an, uh, an X amount of money in salary, then I should be taking a certain amount of like, my, the loan that I take should be, for example, you know, should not exceed more than say, 200% of what my, yeah my oh yeah is. from from the income yeah. right yeah. uh the loan payment not the loan loan payment itself yeah. right okay the loan payment uh that you pay on installments yeah anything between 20 to 30 mm -hmm. of uh of your salary yeah 30 is Should fine okay. it's fine okay. okay more than that uh i don't you recommend i don't recommend okay 30 okay, percent is okay and at the same time if if the asset is yours and it's under yeah. your name yeah you, you you could actually rent it okay. and once you rent it yeah. the, if you if the income that is coming can be also money that you pay for the bank loan True. you get you get my yeah. yeah so in this okay. case you're reducing the percentage that you're actually paying for your income okay okay and in this case if you if you have enough you could still get another loan and get into another room okay wow well, okay. So, okay. If you ha if I have a limited amount of money, then looking at the current scenario, what do you think should be that the one best investment to kind of start with? How much are we looking at uh, as a minimum? Ten thousand dollars, right? Say for example, ten thousand dollars. Since you said you know that's the minimum amount of money. Real estate. Real estate. Yeah. All right. Okay. Real estate. Okay. And 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 people might say, well, ten thousand dollars won't buy you a real estate. Yeah. Actually, it can. It can. If you okay. do your research, it can. Okay. Yeah. Ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars. You could pay. You could pay uh, real estates in Turkey. You could get something also uh, in uh, in Georgia. Yeah. Okay, but in Georgia it's about forty-five to fifty thousand. But you could put ten thousand, and then each each month you could actually spend. But in less than a year or two, the property might be yours. Okay, oh, because wow. yeah, okay. because in, okay. in the end of the day, it's forty-five thousand. It's not two hundred. It's yeah. not three hundred thousand. So, so it could be easier for you to easier to actually cover. Yeah. 
yeah. uh, Turkey easily, uh, 15 to 20,000, you could get something. You could get a studio, you could get a one bedroom on the beach side. Uh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Which is interesting. So you're saying that as an expat, uh, you should be looking to invest anywhere in the world, you know, wherever you think uh, you can make the most, you know, on your investment, that's the place that you should be going to. So for example, if, if, I'm, if you're living in Dubai, it doesn't mean that we have to invest the money in Dubai, you know, we can look at other markets and we can go and invest there. And you could, the, I'm not saying that you, should, you shouldn't think of investing actually in Dubai. No, Dubai is actually a good place to actually, yeah. to actually invest. Yeah. But it really depends on your income, yeah. okay? Yeah. I, I won't say if I if I have a ten thousand yeah. dollars, okay. I won't say I have to wait another ten years to make it a yeah. hundred, a hundred and fifty thousand dollars so I could start then investing. Yeah. It shouldn't be this way. Yeah. Whatever amount you have, the more you invest, you're going to grow, and eventually, you're going to actually be able to have enough income to invest in in places that you initially couldn't afford. Yeah. Okay. okay. For instance, yes. uh, Dubai. For instance, U.S. Yes. For instance, London. Yes. You get a moment. So. Yes. Every year you grow and you grow your, your portfolio, in the end of the day, you're going you're gonna to reach a point where you don't even think of your salary because the salary yeah. doesn't matter anymore. Doesn't There's matter. passive income coming from everywhere. Yeah. Okay, I have yeah. mutual funds giving yes. me a return. Yes. I have real estate giving me a return. Yes. I have stocks giving me a return. Yes. And you're diversifying. Mm -hmm. Diverse. Well, which, yeah, which, is, which is the key and it's very important exactly. to diversify as we spoke about. Okay. okay, anything that you would like to share, like one really important lesson or really important tip or really important advice that you probably learned from 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 a great investor out there someone who's actually a leader a leader okay uh one thing and that, you have followed it as well and i actually followed it yeah. one thing i've actually um learned is 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 <laughs> if 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 it reached the news yeah. you're too late okay if you reach the news, you too late. You always need to find the the niche market somewhere where people didn't actually invest in. Okay, or or there's a potential, there's going to be investment. Okay, because it's 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 very common that people just follow. Just like I'll give you an example, bitcoins. Yeah. Okay. Oh wow. The, the, it's, it's it's this is the best example I could give you because yeah. bitcoins by the time it reached the market, it was yeah. too late. People who invested in bitcoins 20 years ago. Yes. Okay, yeah. they, they bought it with 0 0.66 cent, uh, you know, some cent, and, and they sold it over a hundred, a hundred and thousand dollars. Okay, and they made bought, so much money. It made so much money. <laughs> By the time it reached the market and yeah. everyone knew about it, it started to invest, mm -hmm. it was too late. It, was too late. Yeah. it reached the news already. Like you said, that pick out a niche market, pick out a niche product. I'm sure that a lot of people must have told you, you know, don't go there. Yeah. It's so silly to invest there, right? Because that's not where everybody goes. How do you buck that, you know, herd mentality? Because it's so easy to get swayed and so easy to get influenced by, you know, where everybody else is putting the money. Yes, of course, of course. Now, uh, and it's, it's, all, it's always about making your homework. It's always about uh, doing your research. Now, um, I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you a real scenario, actually. Yeah. Okay. Um, 2000 and 2000, I'm not sure if I'm um, repeating that again, but in 2000, I invested, uh, invested in Egypt in a property. Okay. Okay. Now, okay. the idea, the idea in, in in Rehab, the area where this new Cairo, yeah. the idea is that the city was 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 empty. Okay. No one went, No one was there. Okay? Okay. okay. But already, already, people started to to. There's 25 million, in in in, 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 in yeah in, in Cairo. Wow. 25 million. So people who started moving, they, they need to start moving to other places. Yes. So I started. I invested there, yeah. and it was very cheap. People told me I'm crazy. Okay, okay, because all my other families and my friends were on the other side. Yeah. Okay, but in the end of the day, right now, yeah. everyone there yeah. is actually in my city. Okay, and the reason, <laughs> I swear, everyone is buying in my city right now, but they're okay. buying at a very, very high, high price. High price. Okay, wow. and and when I bought it was it was it was cheap. And and why did you make that decision? I made that decision yeah. because I've seen that uh, governments are starting to actually. Uh, build uh, their, their infrastructure. infrastructure from yeah. there. There was bridges. The airport started to move there a little ah, bit. So okay. from there, I started yeah. to understand that 
this area yeah. sooner or later it will it, it will would, actually yeah, yeah it, it will come will, up and it will come infrastructure up. Infrastructure and it needs to be populated it needs to be populated as well. oh, wow. so okay. it's all about doing your research and asking to uh, asking people around too okay, okay. P um, not asking investors or asking normal people yeah. no go go for lawyers or lawyers for real estate okay oh, wow. and and the lawyers of real estate they have a lot of deeds okay. so for instance they will tell you how many uh, how many land is yeah. being bought by okay. so many people okay. because the, the developers what they do they buy lands and they don't mention it and after maybe five or six years yeah. they start then building on that land so you the the, the lawyers at the real estate yeah. uh, you know where you actually register and everything they would know how much land is being bought in which area so if you have an, a street or, or a certain okay. area that is being bought a lot yes. and people don't know about it because obviously yeah. no one knows that this land is being bought by certain developers, yeah. then you know eventually this, this land will be, uh, they will have construction on this land. Oh wow, so that's a great tip, tip as well that you know, that before investing in real estate, especially you know if you've picked up a niche area, going to lawyers who deal with real estate yeah. They're probably the best people to to take advice from. Okay, now since we're talking about you know all about investing in real estate and picking up niche area, I want to know one question. I want to take is that: Do you think investing in in housing in your dream home in your home country is a good idea, and why? Yeah, yeah, I, I like this question because. Um, I don't think it's uh, it's because you invested somewhere else. I invested somewhere else. I won't, <laughs> yeah. I I don't I didn't invest in my homeland. And 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 the reason is, um, we, we 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 usually get wrong information. We really okay. we do. So so the the ideal thing is to have your home. Is to have a to have a home at your home country. Yeah. To have your your dream house. Yes. And and it doesn't matter if if you're going if you're getting a return out of it what matters is that you you have a home yeah. and then when you retire yeah. you're supposed to be living there yes. okay so yes. already you're predicting in the next 20 25 years that your country is is the best that yeah. everything is great that you could live in it yeah. and then you're also predicting that you could actually live in this home okay that yes. you're actually built wow. plus the mortgages that you actually so there's so much predictions yeah. In, in, in terms of actually investing in, in your own home. The idea is that you need to invest in a place where it actually brings you return, okay? okay? And to, to, to have a mortgage, your dream house, a three bedroom villa, four bedroom villa, is you're paying, you're paying a lot every month. And as long as you're paying, it's liability. It's cash out, not cash in, okay? And this is, this is the exactly opposite what an investor should do. If you're a smart investor, yeah. you would think of how to actually get cash flow in, in instead of right. actually cash flow out. Yeah. Wow. So mortgages and 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 long-term investment in your home. Yeah. If it's not a good investment, don't go for it. Even even if you really want to, don't go for it. Go for go for another place. Okay. Where where you can make most of it. You can make most of your investment. Yeah, where you yeah. have the best return on your investment. Best return, yes. Pick up a place. Do you think a lot of people get it just wrong? The difference between asset and liabilities yeah, yeah. it's a very book it's bookish the, yeah, you know, it's, definition that we we, we, are, we know of yeah the thing is when when it comes to liability and assets yeah. we we know the definition of liability and assets yeah. okay but but because it's it gets mixed up in in a sense of what you have you're living in a place okay you feel that this is your asset yeah. but it's not really an asset if you're paying uh mortgage and loans on it it's not really yours it can never be yours until you you find your name on the deed. You yeah. get my point. Yeah. So so a lot of people get it wrong, and especially the middle class, yeah. they get it wrong. Okay. And and if you realize if you realize there's 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 two types of, of people, right? Yeah. People who take it uh, the the less risky way, yeah. okay? They, it's and they and and they live their life working really hard yeah. just to maintain. And other people who don't actually what you call have to work that much. Okay, they could work four or five hours and they're still making a lot of a lot of income. And and the reason is it's not because of businesses, it's because of the passive income. I'll give you another example of yeah. the of what people do, right? Yeah. Middle class when they come uh, when it comes to actually going for a vacation. Yeah. Okay. They could choose places that are just really too much uh, for them to actually go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
while with their income, they can actually go to another place, have a vacation, yeah. and they still enjoy it, and they don't have to spend that much. Yeah. You get my point? Yeah. So it's all about how to manage your, your finances, okay. vacation-wise, uh, investing-wise, everything. I, I promise you, if you have 15,000 dirhams, yeah. you can still live a good life. If you're having 10,000 dirhams, you can still live a good life, as long as you'll be able to to manage your finances. So we were talking about you know, various avenues of passive income. So you've basically spoken about you know, mutual funds, investing in stocks, investing in real estate, um, which you said is, is a little risky. Yeah. And then you know, if you have some spare money, you can put it in gold. Yes. Anything, anything else that comes to your mind where uh, definitely not cryptocurrencies, at least not in yeah. this, the, 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 the given scenario, but, but anything else that, sh that comes in, to your in mind? In my opinion, I feel that this is, this is the best. This this is the best. Is, these are the best five, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. To, okay. to, to get into. The reason why I also mention FX and CFD is because it's risky. Yeah. Yes, I know. But the reason why I mention it, if you are a good trader and you understand the market, yeah. it could get you a good return. If yeah. you're a good trader. If you're not, then stick to, uh, <laughs> the, more stay, to the more safer options. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. And also there's one thing that uh, that people also need to know about uh, investing. Now, banks and investing in uh, depositing in banks, right? Mm -hmm. There's cert there's banks that are actually giving 18 to 19 percent. Yes. OK. Yeah. If if I were them, I will invest in a bank like that. I'll, very example. I'll take a loan from uh, from Dubai. This is easy. This is no risk at all. I okay. take a loan from Dubai, okay. Okay, which okay. pay which I have to pay about what four to to eight yeah. percent, okay, yeah. and I take this money, I put it in and deposit in a bank in Egypt. Okay. Egypt in return is 18 percent. 18. 18 wow. From that, yeah. I pay the four four to eight yes. percent, and the uh, and the difference between eight and 18, 10 yes. is mine. Well, in my pockets with doing nothing absolutely nothing and and you would you would if i may say so you would do that amid you know the the political turbulence and everything because, you think that's because, not yeah because the banks that you could invest you could put your the, the the political the political issues will always only affect the currency fluctuation yeah. so if you deposit yeah. a dollar yeah. dollar is safe because dollar and dirham right now they're part, they're the same. Three point six five, three point six seven. It doesn't, yeah, yeah it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't change. Yeah, it doesn't okay? change. Yeah. So, so I will do that. I will, I will park my 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 investment in dollars. This is this is a very easy. Anyone could do it. Yeah. <laughs> this wow. is. So, like you know, we promise you that Ahmed is going to be sharing some really really cool cool investment secrets here. You know, <laughs> and sharing some really really valuable tips, which is excellent. You know, like a lot of us, I'm sure that we we are not aware of this. Right, we, we don't know about it and and most of the times you know we don't even we, we don't even think of going in that direction that I think the best and the safest option is Emma to look at various avenues which are which are in your home country we don't even we don't usually go beyond that yeah. but one very interesting thing like you've said is you know pick up a niche product or a market and go beyond you know your comfort zone and look at places where you know that you, you can get the best return on your investment right? there's so many things that you could uh, that you could actually do yeah. and this is like the last the last example i just did it like have you ever lost money as well if yes. i may ask yeah what is the bad investment that you that you made uh the first the first amount that i actually put i put yeah. it in an equity and i didn't even know yeah. stocks and i didn't even know uh, where, where the market is actually going, okay. how it works. Okay. This is why I'm saying the first thing you need to do is invest in yourself and your and your knowledge and okay. to actually follow people. Okay. The process of losing is is important, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. But how much you lose is the thing that you need to actually be able to manage, yeah? <laughs> yes. uh, because once once you lose, failure, failure, you don't fail unless you say, I quit, okay? Mm -hmm. So you lose, and then once you lose, you start thinking wisely. Okay, so the first, the first, the first, I think year or two, I was losing, mm -hmm. and then because I was doing it the wrong way, I was, I was, I was a stubborn person, a stubborn investor. Mm -hmm. I don't listen to people. I do my own thing. Oh. Yeah, and okay. then, and then, this is why I'm saying it's instead of doing the same mistakes, yes. go, go, listen to people who actually went through those mistakes, yeah. and were able to actually uh, manage and and just learn from them instead of just repeating the same mistakes they went through. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the last, the one of Egypt, I did, I did almost a year ago, and I, I was very, I was very lucky because I sat with a banker, okay. So okay. also a banker, yeah. someone yeah. <laughs> who yeah, yeah, was yeah. getting, just sitting down over coffee, and we started discussing, and then he told me this option for Egypt, and and I just took this information, didn't even tell him I was going to do it, 
did this information. I went to Egypt, I asked around and I found out this is right. Okay. Took loan from here and I put it there. And I'm paying out the loan with the interest that is coming out of this. Yeah. And the rest is in my pockets. And you're going to be making a lot of money on that. Inshallah. 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 Yeah. Inshallah. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Ahmed, for speaking with us and you know being on the show. You sh you shared some really really good advice and great tips and great insights, and and I thoroughly you know enjoyed it. And I and I hope that uh, you know so goes for our audiences and anybody who's listening to us and watching us. I hope that you take pointers and you keep them in mind and follow them through. Well not just on financial planning but we have lined up so many so many so much information and so many great topics you know uh, which are which are related to financial planning could be trading could be investing uh, in oil and and gold um you know whether you want to save money and and start trading start start investing managing money managing risks there's so many things that we've spoken about if you're interested in uh investing in cryptocurrency then we have a podcast on that as well so all you have to do is log on to kalishtime.com. You can navigate, you can browse, you can listen to these 10 episodes. And I promise that by the end of these 10 episodes, you're going to be more empowered, more educated, more aware of all the, 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 the essentials of financial planning so that you, know, you can start a great investing future for yourself. All right, and just a gentle reminder, thanks to IG because they are our sponsors. This entire podcast series is powered by them. It's a great platform uh, where you can trade in over 16,000 financial markets or financial products. So it's a wrap from our side, you know, on financial planning. Thank you so much for listening to us. Thank you so much, Ahmed. Have a great day ahead, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.